Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Doombrook's Tuesday at 10. We're so excited. We have fabulous guests today that we'll introduce in a little bit. My name is Jeannie Ann Cannon. I'm the director of Doombrook, and we have Lisa Scheller, who's our development director. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it is a beautiful day. So fortunate to have the sun out on these fall days when it and ends. are just beautiful driving in. They yes. are. So we'll tell you a little bit about our programs, and then we'll get right to our guests today. Of course, we have Nicole from Doolin Schools, who is their new social-emotional learning specialist. So excited, exciting. Um, that role in the school system, especially today, given the pandemic, is so crucially important. And then, of course, we have Tammy and Dan Button, who are going to talk about dental health. Tammy is a dentist, and... Dan uh, runs a video, uh, I'm probably not saying that, videography, video some some, and um, is also the dad of their beautiful uh, two-year-old Beatrice. So um, not only is she going to talk about dental health, but parenting from both a mom and a dad perspective that is why we do what we do here. And, of course, Doombrook is over 32 years old, and we are a non-for-profit organization that does prevention and intervention for child abuse. So prevention piece is very positive where we do parenting skills. Our healthy program, families program goes into homes and teaches parenting skills and, and family management. And like any of us, that can encompass a lot of the issues because parenting is quite, and family management, quite the challenging uh, thing today, always has been, but particularly today with the pandemic. And our public ed is also prevention, where we go into the schools, thousands of students every year in the surrounding areas, where we teach and empower children to take care of their bodies, particularly in a situation that may be inappropriate, and what to do, and who to tell, and how to get help. And then our intervention, of course, is our Child Advocacy Center, where we actually do interviews for children where there's been suspected cases of child abuse. And really it is the beginning of the healing process for both the child and the family. That's the intervention piece. So, without further ado, Miss Lisa Good morning. Uh, Good morning. is going to tell you a little bit about what's happening with fundraising. I know uh, we've had themes each month, and this month is going to be education. Yeah, parenting tips. We're all in this together. So we thought it was really important to bring together some of the people that are the experts in this and kind of let us know what is happening out there in the schools and just like the buttons here, talking to us about, you know, the kids are younger and so on and so forth. So we're looking forward to this month, you know, of learning from these um, individuals that help support June work. Great, yeah. great, Lisa. And maybe you could give a little update on our fundraisers. I know the gala and the Dragon Boat were rescheduled to 2021. And yeah. how are we doing, if there are people listening that want to give to Doombrook any amount, how do they do that? Or you want to give us a little update? Absolutely, absolutely. So, as Jeanne had mentioned, you know, um, our programs have been happening, and they're in full speed, even though we are just kind of all working virtually and so on and so forth. But um, our we had our spring gala, it was supposed to be scheduled back in May, and um, we raised quite a few dollars from our other individuals and businesses who helped contribute to make that goal happen. And then um, last month, if you were um, viewing with us, we had the Dragon Boat Celebration, mm -hmm. where we celebrated the Dragon Boat Races, which was another huge event that we all look forward to. Just before this, we were all talking about the great memories that we had from, you know, um, that great day on Saturday out there at the lake. So, um, but today we have raised $21,125 of a goal that we had set for the Dragon Boat. So the sponsors that had participated in the past were willing to come on and still continue to sponsor us. So we are very thankful for that and um, to keep our programs moving forward. And those sponsors were, uh, once again, Franciscan Health, NIPSCO, Horizon Bank, UPS, Applegate and Company, American Licorice, um, South Shore Skipping Stones, No Place Like Home, which was sponsored by Talk to Tad. Yep. And then General Insurance and Bank of England, Centier Bank of LaPorte County. So without that, and then there were several individuals who also contributed. And so we're very thankful that we were able to continue to receive those dollars. 
Um, and if you want to donate, you can go to our website. And if you go to doingbroke.org, you can just see that there's a little donate button, and you just click that on, and it will take you through the process of donating back to Doombrook. And any amount, 5, 10, 100, 500, whatever you feel you, you know the need to um, contribute, that would be great. Um, or you can text, and the text information is on the Doombrook um, Facebook page here, or on the uh, um, live stream, so you can text to Doombrook. And um, a couple of other things, like Jean Ann had mentioned, you know, this month we're going to be talking to different individuals, and um, next week we will be talking with Michigan City's Assistant Superintendent, um, Wendell McCollins, yes. and he is on our um, Doom Brook board, so we look forward to hearing what's happening in Michigan City. And we'll also be talking to Jeremy Rossi with the Uptown Social Michigan City and uh, Janelle Elwood with Michigan City Chamber. So we're looking forward to the upcoming guests. So if you want to know who's going to be on, to, on the Tuesday at 10, you can check out our Facebook page for that. And, um, you know, and one last thing I want to mention is our sponsor of the month. We started to do that, and that is Heather DeNormandy, and she's with Modern Women Fraternal Financial. So we're thankful to her for giving back to Doombrook. And um, if you're interested in doing a sponsorship, just give us a call, and we we'll see what we can do. Great. Lisa, thank you so much. That was a lot of good information. And again, we also have the parenting, not only a book of the week, but an activity yes, of the week. Gina. That's yes. okay. Yes. So if you want to go online and you can take a look at an activity for your child, we have a new one every Tuesday uh, via Sarah Hoyt, our uh, coordinator for public ed. Yes, and the book of the uh, week is The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Yay! That Yay. is a good one. Um, and then the activity is 10 activities that make food fun for um, kids. So, oh. oh, my gosh. So, yeah, check those out, just as Jean Ann had mentioned. It's on our website, and it's under the um, Fun and Books. And so we just want to make sure that people are getting resources that they need, and they sometimes don't have to think about what they're going to do. Just right. check it out. So, yeah. We need a lot of fresh ideas, especially because the weather's gotten cooler and yes. we're inside, so bring it on. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, let's see have Dr. Tammy and Dan come and visit with us. Thank you for being here. Yay. Oh, well, you both are wonderful one to be here. Uh, thank you so very much. And you both have been so supportive of not only our galas, but dragon boats and just being uh, supportive of our mission. So I'd love to tell, uh, let the audience know, Tammy and Dan, a little bit of just about you both, what you do and your family and your love of giving back to the community. Maybe give us a little background about what you're about. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I grew up in La Porte. I'm born and raised. I'm a slicer. School. Don't have to mention the year. <laughs> but I did graduate, so that's all that's important. Right. I was a swimmer um, in high school, went on to swim in college at Ball State. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, had a degree in chemistry, worked for a few years in Washington, D.C., and overseas, and then came back to Indiana to go to dental school. And while I was in dental school in Indianapolis at Indiana University, I had a good friend who was a classmate who set me up on a blind date with her cousin. Oh, and that turned out to be Dan. My husband. So that was a great thing that happened. <laughs> you came through. That's right. <laughs> so, and I also had some great experiences working with kids during dental school and decided to become a pediatric dentist. So. Um, did a residency at Riley Hospital for Children, which was really inspiring, and had been a cl clinical pediatric dentist ever since 2007 when I um, finished that residency. And most recently, I transitioned to becoming a preventive pediatric dentist full-time. It was work that I did while I was doing more clinical work, but now I'm full-time, which means that I work with pregnant women and uh, families of infants before they even have teeth. So focused more on the growing and developing of healthy teeth so that we can focus less on fixing later. Right. There you so, go. Yes. Which uh, we've talked about prior to the program. Again, Tammy's now focus is prevention before you even have a child. Mm -hmm. And then when you have your baby, even before those first teeth yes. come in, how important that is. 
So that's very exciting. We'll hear a little about that in a little bit. Great, Tim. Thank you. That's a really, you have a great background. A great history. Oh, <laughs> really? You've done a lot of really interesting things. I have. I've been very fortunate to have some serendipitous experiences and opportunities that have taken me all kinds of places. Yeah. So, good for you. Thank you, Tammy. And Dan, a little bit about you? Sure. Um, well, I grew up on the East Coast in New Jersey, New York. Okay. Um, but uh, I have family out here, nice. uh, so I was always coming out to. Area. In fact, we always wonder if we cross paths in one way or another back in the day before we knew each other. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm a videographer. I have a production company Thanks. here in Michigan City. Um, I did a little uh, uh, job in, in uh, psychology. I, I did uh-huh. just, uh, in that field for a while, but now I'm, I'm doing this full time. Great. And we work together a fair amount with the uh, foundation. And, uh, oh, that's wonderful. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Wonderful, Dan. So, import from the East Coast. Yes, huh? yes, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in this. Oh, there you go. I <laughs> right. most of the uh, polite uh, manners. <laughs> <laughs> Not that the East Coast isn't polite, they're just a little different, right? Dan? Exactly. Yeah, a little different in their own unique way. Right. We're still well, on search for the best pizza. Well, yeah, I'm oh, sure. Sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a problem. So but. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Right. Well, very nice. Thank you, Dan. And the videography is so important in these days. I know, you know, with people needing now to be in social media and so sure. forth. Sure. What's the name of your company, Dan? Button Fly Productions. Button Fly Productions. Great. So if anyone is in need of video services, Absolutely. Button Fly Productions. Sure, yeah. I have a full range of clients from school systems and private individuals and dental offices and Sorry. Great. Sure, yeah, I, I would imagine. Yeah, in this day and age, you're going to be busy, busy, busy. Well, it's great. What you're doing here is a great example of that. Well, thank you. I think a lot of people are learning to, to use this medium in a way that uh, right. I haven't maybe in the past. Right. And of course, with the pandemic, the, the idea was oh my goodness, we need to let people know what we're doing. So, hence this show. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe we'll just start out a little bit, Tammy, about you talking about what you just brought up, which is tell us about some major tips for moms who are thinking about being pregnant, becoming pregnant, when they're pregnant, when they first see their baby, and what are some of the dental health tips? I know there's many, but can you give us a little breakdown? Sure. Sure. And if, no matter what stage you're at, as far as if you're thinking about being pregnant, you are pregnant, or you have kids that are teenagers, there's always something that you can do to optimize dental health. So nothing that I'm saying, I don't want to make it sound like you've missed all your Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> some of us, yeah. <laughs> so, but if you're thinking about being pregnant, it's recommended, you know, that you have a physical with your doctor now, and, you know, just to make sure that everything is in line with sustaining a good pregnancy. And it's the same with dental health. So if you've been to the dentist regularly, great. Um, your next dental visit, let your dentist know that you're thinking about becoming pregnant so that anything that you're thinking about having done could be taken care of beforehand. Or if you haven't been to the dentist in a while, that's okay. Um, make an appointment and let the dentist know that you're thinking about becoming pregnant so that they can help you with optimizing your own health. And the reason why that's important is tooth decay is something that is caused by bacteria. So the bacteria that causes tooth decay is obviously an unhealthy bacteria that lives in your mouth. So the less of that bacteria you have in your mouth, the less of a chance that that bacteria can affect your pregnancy in a negative way. Because any infection, which tooth decay is an infection or gum disease, can obviously have a, an effect on your pregnancy. So you want to minimize that. And then also, once your baby is born, just like everything, you pass on your genetics, you pass on also all the bacteria that are in your mouth the first time you kiss your baby. So the less of the cavity-causing bacteria you have in your mouth, the less that gets transmitted to your baby. So the healthier your mouth is from a lot of perspectives. Right. Wow, I never even thought of that. So as a mom, if I have bacteria in my mouth and I kiss my baby, that's a problem. So if everybody has bacteria, we need bacteria in our mouth for digestion, respiration, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But the healthier your baby starts off with the bacteria, so the healthier mom's mouth is, the healthier dad's mouth, or anybody that would be 
you know, close contact to the baby, then that sets up a healthier foundation of bacteria. And you get to a point then where your mouth is at a state of health that it's hard for unhealthy bacteria to actually live in there. So, very good. Wow, those are great tips. And, and I, that goes along with um, Tammy and her group at um, South Shore Skipping Stones. I know we've worked with them before in trying to help parents learn some of these tips that we don't even think of. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you so much for that. And uh, along those lines, I think you talked about as being a dentist, that sometimes new moms, when you see new moms or young children, you see some of the challenge, the parenting challenges they have. So you want to talk about the sure. of it and sure. what you see? And so a big one with dental health, too, is, you know, that's connected to overall health. And if you think about dental health, your mouth, what goes on in the mouth, it's eating, it's breathing, it's talking. So there's all kinds of things that are connected to this area that house the teeth. One of the major, major issues these days is a lot of the things that are available to us to eat aren't really healthy choices. They may be marketed as such, the packaging may look like it is, but then when you really get down to it, it actually promotes the unhealthy growth of bacteria in the mouth and can have an effect on the behavior, all kinds of things. You know, I'm talking about sugars and things. And it's so surprising when you actually start reading labels and realize things that have sugar. Um, we buy frozen fruit for our daughter and some of the brands actually, the first ingredient is sugar and they add the sugar to the frozen fruit, which fruit is fine by itself, you know, right. it doesn't need any help. But mm -hmm. So when you have a two-year-old that all of a sudden now is showing signs of something that's out of balance by manifesting tooth decay, mm -hmm. then we start to look at the why of that, which is so important because we want to get back in balance so that this isn't something that continues to happen. Um, so to have a two-year-old, which we know is just a daily challenge, sure. but now to have to take a two-year-old through, okay, you no longer can have this, you no longer can have this, we got to cut that out. That's a tough, tough job, you know, to, to basically change everything about a child's diet if that's what's necessary. So we all know the best habit to change is one that never starts. <laughs> so that's why the earlier you get information, then the more informed you are, hopefully then the choices you make are you know, fueled by that good information instead of having to, you know, go backwards a little bit and change something. So that's why starting during pregnancy and before a baby even has teeth is so important right. for that. So the benefit of hearing just those few tips and those things to think about can prevent long-term problems that, of course, Nicole and the Dillon School System you know, sees later in elementary and middle and high school when children have issues. Um, having been in the school system myself, I can remember asking kids, you know, what do you eat every day? And, you know, a Coke in the morning, a Coke in the afternoon. Oh, mm -hmm. and we wonder why we have anxiety issues. Yes. It's a little long dental problems. And if you don't know, if you're not aware, it's a thing, right? You know, if you don't you know, you're providing your child with something to drink and something to eat. Right. And that alone for a lot of people can be a big feet just to be able to do that. Right. And so we want to make sure that we're also supplementing with information about good choices. Right. So a visit to the dentist's office can really help a parent get a stronger baseline foundation of a lot of things, not just dental health. Well, it affects dental health, but what to eat and your sleep habits and exercise and all those kinds of things. The teeth just happen to be the part of your body that sometimes this imbalance can manifest and it manifests in the form of cavities. So that's why, especially in children, the why of that is so important. Is it something to do with diet? Is it something to do with, you know, does the child have a dry mouth because they're not breathing at night and they're not sleeping well because of that? And also if their mouth is dry, the saliva is not there to clean the teeth. Um, is it something to do with the underlying medical condition that hasn't been diagnosed? There's all kinds of reasons that it's important to find out why the tooth decay is happening. And for parents to know, it's nothing to feel bad about. You know, we just don't know these things. Mm -hmm. So no one is judging you as a parent. And I can remember feeling that way with my pediatrician. He's like, Jean, I think you need to read this book on parenting. I'm like, what am I doing? 
no, 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 no. no but no. here are some ideas that might support you. And yes. that's what you're saying. A visit yes. to the dentist office can help. Yep. And, um, you know, Dan and I are both professionals. We have more years of education between the two of us than we want to mention. Right. And as parents, we right. don't have all the answers. Right. So this is oh, definitely really? not a, you know, shaking the finger right. or, you know, what have you done? This is just, you know, getting to the bottom of what's going on or helping to prevent. I mean, I think about the things that I wouldn't have known just not being there to you. Like, that, like, oh, brushing. Okay. I mean, her sure. daughter is, uh, you know, almost two. And brushing her teeth is not the high point of our day. Right. And I honestly, if it, if it wasn't for you persisting with that, I think I would have, uh, she cries a lot during it, but as soon as it's done, she's super happy, she's fine. So I understand that. Like, this is just one of those things that, you know, it may not be the easiest parent to do. And I can totally understand parents. I don't know if I would have been persistent with it without your right. you know, expertise and uh, uh, guidance there. But, and then it will be a habit for Beatrice, right, Dan? Yeah, 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 maybe, yeah. So, no, but I mean, that's so interesting. As you say, you just don't know. So what we don't know, how can we do? And you're here to help us know how important, even though it's a struggle to get your children to brush, how important. Because if you don't, then you end up handy. Issues. And that's with teeth. I mean, I would have known yeah. teeth, but even before the teeth, like the bath house, sure. all of that getting started early and all of that stuff. Is, uh, mm -hmm. it's just, that information does not seem to be out there right. as much as we do. Great. So if parents are watching, Tammy, in, in order to get an appointment at uh, um, South Shore Skipping Stone, what might they do? Just give them a call or look you up on the web? One thing they might want to do, first, because, again, with the age of everything being online these days. Yes. Sometimes you want to check things out first or see what's happening. Okay. And um, we offer a prenatal oral health class online that will be launching in November. Mm -hmm. And then also an infant oral health class called Preteen Prep School. So it's everything to know before your child has teeth so that the environment they come into is a healthy one. So it's the growth and development of health. So those are both available in November. And another program that we're launching, Cavity Free Families, is for families that may have gotten the news that a child, a young child that they have under the age of six has a severe form of decay. And this is a program then to work one-on-one -on -one with them to find out the why. Oh. So to be able to do that work and figure out what we need to do to change whatever we need to change. Um, have some referrals if it's something with mouth breathing or if it's something to do with whatever it might be, but to have the time to figure that out. Right. So in order for a, for a mom who's listening for the online classes, the prenatal and the infant, do they, where do they go to get information on how to get that class online? On our website, socialskippingstones.org, or okay. we're also on social media on Instagram at um, Born to be Cavity Free. So either place, be great. And you can also um, email us or direct message us on Instagram if you have questions now um, about anything specific, want more information. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tammy. That is just wonderful information. And that's so great to hear, too, Dan. Um, you know, real-life days of busy parents, working parents, trying to do the best with their child. And sometimes we don't think about their dental health, and not only is that important to think about, but it, it uh, is um, helps us see the other things that we need to be doing, i.e. looking at labels and sugar. And, you know, I think we're learning about the ills of sugar, but, boy, when those juice boxes are easy to give to kids and they're filled with sugar, what a bummer. You know, really, a lifetime bummer. I mean, you know, there are families that, you know, lived off that since day one and how they can be so problematic. And, and to be clear, our daughter loves sugar. We're just looking for a lot of the processed sugar. So she loves bananas, and sugar, strawberries, cherries, and sometimes that's almost all she eats for her dinner, but she's very into it. But, uh, you know, we can be confident that it's not basically cause of disease because it's, right. it's a natural, right. it's naturally a food. Right. And as you say, starting them off like that, that's all they know. If they know healthy eating and healthy brushing, that's what they know. 
he said to the, you know, I mean, even think that earlier what I did, that I may have missed out on certain things that I could have you know, enjoyed more afterwards. Right, so, fresh. So that, mm-hmm. As opposed to some things that uh, yeah. I think you would have so fun. Incidentally, when you grow up, they don't, it doesn't taste the same. No, no. no. <laughs> right, right. Oh, it's funny. It's funny, <laughs> Well, thank you, uh, really, Tammy. That is great information, and Dan, thank you. Um, one last thing we want to talk about is your how you give to the community and Doonbrook, your relationship with Doonbrook, and maybe a little bit about your experience with our Dragon Ball races. Well, you know, as we mentioned, as new parents, just knowing that there's a place like Doonbrook for people to go when you need any kind of help, and that's just so important. It's a great organization. I mean, uh, that's a wide spectrum of, of things they offer. So, you know, so they plan to be part of that in any way. And, uh, with, the, with the Dragon Ball races, what a fun way to be a part of yeah. it. It's a great to really miss it this year. And we're really looking forward to next. Uh, a, a great, amazing day. Uh, just this festive atmosphere and, and being out in, in nature and, and get that exercise and be part of the team. I mean, it's just, it's just a big fun day. It's like, it's a tailgate atmosphere, and the food, and the kids, and the face painting, and all that stuff. What a, what a wonderful idea, and what a great way to, to help support this great organization. Thank you, Dean. Yeah, thank you. And one other thing I want to mention, as a healthcare professional in the area, I've taken advantage of being able to call Doonbrook on numerous occasions to talk to somebody confidentially about something I may have seen. Yes. And I know when I call that the advice that I'm going to get, first of all, is kept confidential. And second of all, it's from somebody who has the child's best interest in, at heart without even knowing the child. So, you know, for other healthcare practitioners to know in the area that that exists. And also, I have, we've handed out Doonbrook's phone number to many um, kids that parent or to the parents when they might seem a little overwhelmed mm-hmm. with their situation and I can say confidently that I know Jim Burke will follow up with them or if they call and will be headed in the right direction with any services that might be there. Well, thank and you. Sometimes just that connection yes. or is, can make a huge difference for right. somebody who is overwhelmed and especially you know, with everybody taking on more right now that's so important to be able to know that that's okay, right? And as Dr. Tammy is talking about, that's our Healthy Families Program that is support for all parents um, that can help you manage whatever issue you're talking about. It's a free program. In fact, if you do the assessment, you get a free pack and play. Um, It was through a grant. Um, But it is a visit once a week, and now they're done virtually. And I have to say, really, we laugh about, you know, when we're parents, we think we know what we're doing, but oftentimes we're challenged. <laughs> and uh, um, it's so nice to have someone to bounce an idea and just be heard and where am I going with this in developmental stages? What are the expectations? So thank yes. you, Tammy. Thank you. And also, just following up on that, that it's yes. not always, Holy Families isn't something that they're there to pull around and see what's wrong. Mm-hmm. They're there to pull around and see what they can help. With. Right. Right. So, um, again, it's that non-judgmental. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not about what you're not doing. It's about what you need, what you as a parent think you need help and ideas on. So we're there to help you with what you need help with, not to tell you what to do. Well, thank you, both of you, very much. Dr. Tammy and Dan Button, we wish you all the best. We'll see you September 11th through 21 in Stone Lake, bright and early on that beautiful lake. And between now and then, have a a wonderful um, holiday coming up. I can't believe I'm saying that. It's October. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. We'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. So, our next guest, so very exciting, is Nicole Slack, and Nicole has a new position with the Doolin Schools. Come on over, Nicole. It is the Social Emotional Learning Specialist. Yes. So, thank you, Nicole. Thank I know you. you're brand new, I am. but Doolin Schools is a wonderful, wonderful district, and I'm so excited to have you. So maybe just to start, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Thanks so much for having me. 
Um, I am, like you said, brand new to Joomlin Schools and um, in a brand new position. The Social Emotional Learning Specialist is brand new. And what that really entails is social emotional learning is a process through which children learn and understand how to manage their emotions. They set and achieve personal positive goals. They learn how to feel and show empathy for others, um, maintain those positive relationships, and learn how to make responsible decisions. So we take that and incorporate that into the classroom and curriculum. So um, as a social emotional learning specialist, I work with the teachers and the educators in the Doolin School Corporation to um, incorporate lessons that will focus on social emotional learning. Okay. So, um, I, like I said, it's my first year in Doolin. I've spent the last 12 years in the Portage School System as um, a school advisor, very similar to a school counselor, Portage School some school, school advisors. I was at a K through five elementary school, Central Elementary, for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I'm born and raised in Portage, so um, switching to Doolin is a, kind of crossing the border, but um, I'm born and raised in Portage, um, graduated from Portage High School. I attended Purdue University in West Lafayette. I'm currently taking courses at um, Butler University mm -hmm. in Applied Educational Neuroscience. And um, I'm a mom and married. I've been married to my husband, Todd, for 14 years. He's also from Portage. And we have two boys. Talon is in sixth grade, and Landon is in fifth grade. And they are currently um, at Westchester Intermediate in Dublin. Great. So great. That's, that's me. I'll look at about you. Well, this yeah. is so exciting. And especially um, as Nicole and I talked a little bit about prior to the show, is this, the need for teachers to support children yes. with emotional needs. Because there's the academic goal of school, but if the emotional is really out of whack, it's really hard to get the academics down. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We have to bridge that gap. And ultimately, if our students are not in the right frame of mind and they're not ready to learn, it's going to be harder for our teachers right. to teach that academic material, right. that math and science and, right. you know, reading is, you know, harder to sure. have them learn Absolutely. when their, you know, social emotional aspects are kind of out of whack. So what you do, it sounds like, Nicole, is you try to help the teachers put in their curriculum mm -hmm. um, plans that will help them support better emotional growth? Absolutely. We want this to not be one more thing on a teacher's plate. We want it to be the plate. We want social emotional learning to kind of encompass everything. So just little things that they can do throughout their day to have our students start to, you know, co-regulate or regulate themselves um, if they're starting to feel any type of, um, you know, demands or like, you know, if they're starting to feel as if they're upset or, you know, then we yeah. try to implement some different types of social emotional learning to, to help with that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. So can you give us some ideas of things that you do to help teachers? What are some of the... Sure. Things? I... I have a really strong interest in like applied educational neuroscience and mindfulness. Okay. So I really would love to be able to see our classroom teachers incorporate mindfulness more into their lessons. Um, that, but that's just me sure. and my personal background. Uh -huh. um, it's something I have some experience with um, from Portage. But we, um, to do that, it's so very simple. It's just taking those moments, mindful moments, to, you know, deep breathe. And we try to incorporate silly ones for our little kids, like if we bumblebee breathe or, you know, they're square breathing or just simply, you know, take a breath in and then let it out. You know, just little things to give our, our children some time to transition or to take that moment to regroup themselves. That's great. So something as simple as a teacher telling a class, okay, let's take a moment yep. to breathe is, what are the benefits? I mean, it yes. centers the child, it centers the teacher. Absolutely. And it's something we take for granted. Right. You know, we as adults know, okay, like, I need a moment. Yeah. But we don't always take into consideration that our children need moments also. Right. And we, you know, 
have so much that we have to incorporate in a day. As a teacher, they have to meet all of the standards that they're required to teach, and it's hard. So we don't want to make it feel like social-emotional learning is that one extra thing. That's something that they, oh, they have to incorporate throughout the day. So we could do a mindful moment in a minute or two. Nice. And then transition, you know, especially when you first come in the morning or after recess or when they're in the secondary system when they're moving from class to class just sure. to get them refocused. Sure. So, and these could actually also be techniques for parents at home Absolutely. when you're in the thick of things. I know uh, there's a book called Parents, uh, uh, what is it, One, Two, Three? Uh, Magic. Magic yes. One, Two, Three. Thank you. <laughs> Magic One, Two, Three. Yes. And that is one of the tools is taking a moment taking a break, mm -hmm. giving yourself time, how powerful that is. Yes, yeah, we all need yeah. that moment, even as a mom. Yeah. I need a moment a lot. Right, 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 <laughs> you, know, right. I have a, you know, a 10 and a 12-year-old, yeah. two boys, I at times need that moment. You're busy. And yes. especially, uh, you know, given that, Nicole, would you say during this pandemic as a parent, how even much more important it is to center yourself. Absolutely, that was one of the things that sure. we need to okay. talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, tips for parents. Like, we are obviously in uncharted territory, yeah. brand new waters in how to handle education in the pandemic. And I know that Doolind, um, we are in our second day of phase three. So our parents had a choice between virtual learning or um, transitioning from we were in hybrid to now um, a four day a week traditional in person learning with Wednesdays being an e learning day. Uh -huh. And, you know, there's a lot of fear and anxiety that comes with that. Are we doing what's best for our kids? Are we doing what's best for our families? Right. So for parents, you know, I love the word mindful. I would love for them to just be mindful of how they talk about school or mm -hmm. the return to school. You know, our words can be used to either heighten or reduce our child's stress and anxiety. You know, what we say ultimately impacts our children. So if I can just give any advice, it's, you know, try to stay calm okay. and be positive. Our emotions are contagious. And our children will mirror what we are saying and doing. And if we are demonstrating or showing a heightened fear or anxiety, they in turn are going to process it and show that also. So, you know, we don't have the magic answer. I don't know what's best for anyone's family or what's going to be best for their child, but, you know, we're all in this together. Right. It is completely uncharted and brand new territory, and we're all doing what's what the best we can for all of the children involved. Well, and that's a wonderful tip that you're saying, Nicole, is that um, to try, you know, our attitude when you're sending your little ones off or your big ones, yes. um, that our attitude, if we're complaining like, I hate this pandemic, I don't want it going to end, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, that's not good. Right. To say, you know, versus... Gosh, kids, it's difficult, but we're going to get through this. Absolutely. Let me hear about problems you're having to process that. Absolutely. Have those open conversations because ultimately they are probably having difficulties also. So talk with your child. You know, talk with the teachers. They want to be involved okay. also. You know, we are all in this together. Um, everyone's experiencing a change. Yes. It's something we, you know, never have gone through before. So I think, you know, having those open conversations right. are going to be in the best interest. I like that, too, to even email your teachers. I, I know teachers are overwrought with all of this. So if you're having a concern, uh, email your teacher and see if you can get some advice. Anything yeah. else, tips, anything? That I think a big tip for parents when working with teachers is offer grace <laughs> and use uh -huh. patience. You know, Uncharted Waters, they are doing the absolute best they can to provide your child with an education, whether it's virtual or hybrid or in-person or somehow, some way meshing all of those methods together. There are districts who are, you know, kind of doing all of the above. Right. So, you know, offer grace. That's Use patience. It's 
be supportive to the best of your ability there. I'm sure the classroom teacher is trying to be supportive also. Yeah. You know, we want communication. You know, we want to know if your child's struggling with something or if it's going well. We'd love to hear the positives also yeah. in, in addition to the negatives. Um, I read a great article on UNICEF. So it was online. I found it when I was looking just at transitioning my own children back, and it's supporting your child's mental health through this pandemic. Um, I actually think I have it here. Great. It's called Supporting Your Child's Mental Health During COVID-19 School Returns, and it was put out by UNICEF. Okay. It's got great tips and tricks and how to ease of that transition. Great. Maybe we'll try to get, if you can email that to absolutely. me, we'll try to get, put that on yeah, the awesome. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I just found, you know, when I was doing some research for my own children and how sure. to kind of get them prepared, I know that there are still some districts who are virtual yes. still, so there are going to be those parents when the option to return comes up within the next couple of weeks. Some districts were going to be transitioning back at the second quarter. Right. This may be some helpful information for them. Right. I also read an article many, many years ago when I became a mom that there are nine minutes in your child's day that are extremely important. Mm -hmm. The three minutes when they wake up, mm -hmm. the three minutes after school, and the three minutes before bed. And huh. that kind of shapes how their day goes and I usually try to especially those three minutes at bedtime that's when I try to check have those conversations with my kids with you know what they're concerned about what's going on I usually get my best information when they're laying in bed right. and it's dark and they're you know they're more willing to talk right they're a little crabby in the morning I don't know about the three minutes <laughs> when they first wake up right, right, right. but the three yeah. minutes are after school when I pick them up or when we get home together like just riding in the car yeah. I'm mindful of you know just why you shouldn't have your phone out while you're driving anyways but them having their phones like I do allow my kids to have phones um and just, you know, have them put them away so we can have that conversation. How is school, you know, any concerns? Nicole, like you that? are a rock star. Those <laughs> are fabulous, really. Oh, Everything you talked about, the mindfulness, um, I love the idea of having grace and patience. Yeah. We all need it. We Not all only need with it. your teachers, but to communicate with them. And I think in our whole society, we talk about that a lot. To yes. have grace and patience because you never know if someone cuts you off in the car out on the street. Normally, you'd be all angry. Right. They don't know if they just lost their job. They lost someone to COVID. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. So, there are so many extenuating circumstances yeah. that right. can impact one moment. So right. just offering that grace. Right. And although we're all very busy, I love your nine minutes, you know, yeah. three minutes in the morning, three minutes when they get home from school, and three minutes when they're going to bed to yeah. check in with them. Yes, yes. I, and I'm a busy mom. Yes. I, I mean, I work full time. Right. Ten and a 12 year old, my boys play. Every travel sport known to <laughs> man, I feel like I'm a human Keyword travel. Yeah, human taxi driving right. from one point to the next. So like I said, three minutes in the morning, I just count that as not a good time, especially with my 12-year-old. He's super crabby in the morning. But, you know, when we're in the car, take that opportunity when we're traveling from one place to the next just to talk to them, right? And maybe ask them to put their phones down. Yes. For five minutes. Yes, just yes. Just five minutes. They whine about it at first. Right. But then they're, right. you know, they're happy to have a conversation right. with you. And it's hard. I, we're all busy. Right. So you got to take those moments when you have them. Well, Nicole, Dunlin Schools is very lucky to have you. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for being here today. Really, thank those you. are the, those are just great reminders for all of us. You know, yeah. parents, all of us. Um, and, and thank you for what you do. In the school system, I know that's not easy. Uh, teachers are stressed, and administration is stressed, and the kids are stressed. So Absolutely. your role is to say, you know. Take a minute. Yes. yes. Take a minute. Because really, I mean, we can make it what we want it to be. You know, what we put into it is what it will end up being. And Absolutely. And as you say, if we're negative, it's going to be negative. If it's positive, it's going to be as best as it can be. So, Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Thank you so much. All I right. appreciate it. All right. Thank so, you. the end of our show today, and I would just say again, thank you to Nicole. Thank you to the Buttons for being here. Lisa, Lydia, Megan, thank you for all that you do in making the show successful. Um, be kind to yourselves. Uh, be mindful. Yes. I love Nicole's <laughs> idea. Be mindful.